This is a special day the Lord's made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the 135th year in which students and families just like you have gathered together for the commencement exercises of Belhaven University. This is the long-awaited day to recognize the accomplishments of these graduates, and the journey that you began several years ago comes to completion with this ceremony, but it's not simply the accomplishment of your degree that we celebrate today, but the start of a new phase of your life. And with this beginning go the prayers of our Board of Trustees, our faculty, and administration. And I want to welcome to the platform today the Chair of our Board of Trustees, Mr. Cal Wells, who will be presenting your diplomas to you today. And we also have one very special guest here with us for commencement, and I'd like for you to join me in welcoming Dr. Clyde Muse, a legend of Mississippi Higher Education, President of Heinz Community College, and the grandfather of a graduate today. Dr. Muse, we are so glad you're here. Thank you. Education is the interaction that takes place, graduates, between you and your professors, and thus it's fitting that the faculty are right here with you today, exactly where they've been every step of the way. So as you graduate, we also honor this outstanding group of faculty who have pushed and pulled and stretched and challenged you to become your very best. And gathered here are your friends and your family and supporters because you did not get to this place alone. Through their encouragement and their prayers and sacrifice, you've achieved this important goal. Now, as you know, graduates, the mission of Belhaven University is to prepare students academically and spiritually to serve Christ Jesus in careers, human relationships, and the world of ideas. And I pray that you'll be alumni who live lives worthy of that mission and of our campus motto to serve, not to be served. Dr. Joe Martin, Professor of Christian Ministries, who will be honored as Professor Emeritus this morning as we celebrate his nearing retirement, is going to lead us in the opening prayer for this celebration of service of commencement. And as he prays, let's join together in celebrating the accomplishments of the graduates of Belhaven University, Class of 2018. Let us, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for this day of celebration, celebration of successful completion of academic requirements, celebration of the end of this phase of the students' lives. They've lived together as a part of a community and now leave for other communities. We thank you, Lord, for creating us in your image and for giving us significant work in the world that you created. It's a privilege to be entrusted with responsibilities for things which are important to you in the world that you love so much that you sent your son to die for it. We thank you for giving Bellhaven University, the important task of preparing students academically and spiritually to serve your son in their careers, relationships, and in the world of ideas. Bless these graduates as they transition from campus life to other commitments. May they use wisely what they've learned up to this point. May they seek and find your guidance in the future so they can continue learning how to do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. We honor you, Lord, as the creator, sustainer, the owner, the owner of all that exists, the gift, giver of every good and perfect gift. We pray that you will continually remind these graduates and all of us by your word and spirit that the earth is yours with all that's in it, that all the people in the world are also created in your image and likeness. May we learn to live more and more as stewards of all creation. May we learn to live more and more in the awareness that all nations and all peoples are of equal value in your sight. May the whole world benefit from the blessings you have poured out on us. May your name be praised in all the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
This morning, I have the pleasure of awarding Bellhaven University Professor Emeritus title to Dr. Joseph M. Martin. As a career professor of Christian ministry, Dr. Martin is more than deserving of the title Professor Emeritus. He's already joined the ranks of Bellhaven's legacy of learning, those who have completed at least 20 years of teaching service at Bellhaven. Dr. Martin began as a faculty member at Bellhaven in Christian Ministries and Biblical Studies, having already served two years as a pastor in Alabama and then as a missionary in Brazil for 25 years as a church planter and professor at the Edward Lane Bible Institute. Dr. Martin received his doctorate from Georgia State University, a Master of Theology and a Bachelor of Divinity from Columbia Seminary, and a Bachelor of Arts in History from Duke University. Dr. Martin and his wife Helen came to minister at Belhaven during a critical stage of the university's reinvention of itself and has contributed immeasurably to Belhaven's unrelenting commitment to a biblical worldview in all of its academic endeavors. Helen also served as campus counselor and biblical studies instructor at Belhaven until her retirement this last year. She too is a member of the Legacy of Learning Circle of Instructors. All three of the Martin's children were born in Brazil their daughters, Lisa, Sarah, and their son, Jody. Dr. Martin's legacy verse is John 16, where Jesus said, in, P in me you have peace, in the world you have tribulation. But I have overcome the world, so be create courageous. Joe, it's been 28 years of wonderful service with you, personally. And Helen, thank you for being key souls in making Bellhaven University the strong Christian university it is today. Thank you. Oh Lord, our Lord, your majest majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them, Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and everything that swims the ocean currents. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. We are honored to welcome to Belhaven University a gifted artist to receive the honorary degree, the Doctor of Music Performance. I'd like to invite Stephanie Chung and her husband Peter to come and join me beside me here. These are special friends of Belhaven from Vancouver, British Columbia, and we are glad you're here today. Stephanie Chung graduated from Seoul National University School of Music with a degree specializing in piano. She continued in graduate studies at the University of Southern California. She's been the lead conductor for significant concerts such as the Blue House recital in 2010. The Blue House is the Korean president's house like we have the White House. Carnegie Hall recitals in 2011 and 2014, and a Parliament of Canada recital in 2012. In 2013, President Barack Obama awarded her the Order of Civil Merit. In 2015, she received a similar award from the President of South Korea for a contribution in promoting the rights and interests of Koreans abroad. She and her husband, Peter, have been remarkable advocates for special needs children, especially. And I'm thrilled that today her husband, a significant business leader in Vancouver, is here with us as well. Two years ago, we were privileged to award him an honorary degree from Belhaven University, an honorary doctorate. So this may be the only couple who ever share both having an honorary degree from Belhaven University. 
And accompanying them on their visit today is their daughter, Hannah, who's sitting with my wife, Mary Lou, down here in the front row. And uh, she is a marvelous violinist. And if her career stays on the track it's on now, she may be back here in about 25 years to get her honorary degree and join the rest of the family. So, Hannah, we look forward to that. In accepting this degree today, Stephanie will not only share remarks with us, but she and Hannah will perform this morning. And it is a privilege to present to receive the honorary degree, Doctor of Music Performance, a woman who's a magnificent musician, an advocate for the needs of others, and first and foremost, a follower of Jesus Christ, Dr. Stephanie Chung. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, President Dr. Parrott and faculties and Bellhaven University for inviting me here today and conferring on me honorary doctorate for music. I'm truly honored and humbled to receive this degree. I was born in Seoul, South Korea and started the piano lessons at the age of five. From then, I pursued studying music in Korea and the United States. Music was my passion. Later on, I became a choral conductor. The mission statement of our choir, which I have been conducting for a number of years, is to spread the gospel through music. Psalms 108 and verse 3 says, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing of you among the people. This November, about 100 voices from our choir will continue to pursue our mission by performing concerts both Israel and Jordan. In our lives, we all have various experiences. A few years ago, I was faced with a challenging situation. My eldest son, Joseph, who suffered from autism and epilepsy, passed away at the age of 32. It was a heartbreaking experience. But by God's grace, especially through music, I experienced the living presence of God. He gave me strength and comfort through this difficult time. Worshiping God with music allowed me to focus on him and to go forward in my journey. I learned this from my son Joseph, who when alive, made every effort to joyfully praise the Lord despite of his disabilities. I encourage you to focus on God and keep your eyes on him. When you focus on him and worship and lift your praises to God, you will find the strength and power in all you do. I congratulate all graduate and families, especially mothers. I strongly encourage you to seek God's direction for your life. Because of my personal experiences, I know in my heart that God has a special plan for each of us. Thank you again, Bellhaven University, for bestowing on me 
this honorary degree. It is my prayer that this degree will be used to glorify God. Now, I ask my daughter Hannah to join me playing Amazing Grace. I chose this song because it speaks of the amazing grace of our amazing God. Thank you very much.
It is hard for me to believe that I'm introducing our provost and senior vice president and my friend, Dr. Dan Fredericks, for his final commencement before he begins his retirement later this afternoon. <laughs> he really is. There are few places to look on our campus where we, you will not see the handprint of Dan Fredericks. From building a marvelous faculty that live out our mission, to creating nearly 100 new academic programs, to establishing branch campus that is an online degrees, to developing a host of, of master's degrees and now doctoral degrees, to assuring scholarship as a priority, and to infusing Christian worldview learning into every aspect of Belhaven University, Dan Fredericks has been the architect. Dan was the academic dean when I came to Belhaven 23 years ago, and maybe the reason my job is so easy is Dan was the interim president for a few months before I got here and fixed it all. We've carried some heavy loads together through these nearly quarter of a century. We've tackled some of the most complex problems together and shared in some both the disappointments and the joys of the challenge. We have so much history together that we, we work so closely in this calling that we communicate in a depth that's rare in leadership. We don't always agree, and neither of us are slow to back down from what we believe, but we've always come together in every solution and have never had a problem we couldn't work out with kindness and grace and always for the best of the university. President and provost are two very different roles, and we understand and respect that. And Belhaven will have a new provost next year when our national search is completed, but, God, and, but whoever God brings to fill that office will never replace what Dan has meant to me personally through this nearly quarter century we've worked together. His wisdom and value in our leadership team of the university cannot be measured. His mentoring and care of faculty has been enormous. His personal scholarship is exceptional and his love for students is limitless. He and his wife, Mary, have been at the core of Belhaven University for 35 years. And I'm glad three of their four children can be here today for this special occasion. They grew up on this campus in a house that we tore down where we now have a parking lot by the Brins Residence Hall. <laughs> and Mary, who led this, read the scripture a few minutes ago, is the founding director of our High Scholars Program, our online dual enrollment program for high school students. And some of you who are graduating today are also graduates of High Scholars, thanks to Mary's efforts. Now, most of you see Dr. Fredericks as our provost, but along with all Dan does, he's a world-class scholar. He's probably the leading expert alive today in the book of Ecclesiastes, and the reason he's finishing his service at Belhaven is to give full time and effort to his writing. As our commencement speaker this morning, to be awarded the title Provost Emeritus and to receive the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters, I am honored to introduce to you the most creative academic world leader in the Christian higher education world, a biblical scholar with few peers, and my friend in the journey, Dr. Dan Fredericks. Good morning, graduates. Good morning, supporting friends and family of graduates. Thank you, Chairman Wells and the Belhaven University Board of Trustees for conferring on me, Doctor of Letters. It's an honor to be given an honorary degree by not just a board, but one that has cared and supported me and Belhaven University so sincerely and intimately. Uh, graduates, uh, some of you have been at Belhaven two years, you transferred in, some maybe four. Some of you have maybe even that much brighter because you were here six years. <laughs> but it's taken me 35 years to get my degree from Belhaven University. 
so be encouraged. Some of us are slow learners. Thank you, Dr. Parrott, for the introduction. I have to say, as one who's giving his last words, quote unquote, to students and to faculty and staff who are here and to a board member representing the other board members, that that's uh, a little ominous, one's last words. It sounds more like the introduction was a eulogy for somebody who's just been executed. <laughs> Last public words to students, faculty, staff, and administrators. Final words at a commencement are, are important. They can summarize what you all have accomplished. They can summarize what Bellhaven's goals and aspirations were for you as graduates. They can introduce you to a new phase, commencement, but not only for the graduates here commencing on a new life, but everybody here is commencing a new week tomorrow on the Lord's Day. And another expectation of final words is that they be extraordinary. Sorry. <laughs> My final words will only be ordinary because they're about an ordinary man. So this is just going to be an ordinary address. Graduates, as Bellhaven students, you've been educated with an emphasis on a biblical worldview, and because of that, you have been educated in a more profound way than most any student walking across any stage at any university. You've had a profound experience here of just not learning the facts, but you've had the experience of learning what a biblical worldview is. But one can have the right worldview. They can have the right ideas. They can graduate with a profound education, but that's not enough. What matters is what we do day to day, hour to hour, because of our worldview. Your worldview education at Bellhaven has touched on very profound matters. You'll remember these lectures. Postmodernism leads to nihilism. Right? You remember that one? <laughs> Epistemological despair leads to relativism. That was your second favorite lecture. <laughs> but maybe more noticeably, you learned there are absolute truths. There are absolute moral standards. There are priorities in life, and you know in which order they should be. You've learned about the nature of creation. You've learned about the nature of humanity. You've learned, hopefully, how to serve Christ Jesus in your career, in your personal relationships, and in the world of ideas. But I hope you're taking with you that it doesn't really matter what you say your worldview is compared to what you do on the basis of your worldview. Whoa. <laughs> I, I, I stand before uh, my, my jury and judges here, my faculty behind me, my family in front of me, other administrators here. Talk about final words before an execution. <laughs> to say that your worldview doesn't really matter much unless it affects profoundly what you do can be a prime credential for being the chief of hypocrites. But as I said, I'd like to spend my last words on the ordinary, so if you would turn to page four of your program. Always encouraging to hear the rustling of pages as a professor. This portion of the Bible, 2 Samuel 18, is a pretty ordinary passage. It's not a grand theological discourse. It's not about the greatest battle in the Bible. It's not about the greatest uh, people of the Bible, although one of them is mentioned, only mentioned. Instead, this passage is a very short story. In fact, it's a story within a, a much larger story. It's hardly written about in the commentaries. Nobody really thinks it's worth too many uh, words in a Bible commentary. It's probably unremembered by most here. It reports a very brief conversation involving an ordinary man. And I'd encourage you to read the Old Testament. We love the New Testament. 
We love to hear about Christ and what he did for us and afterwards what the apostles did under the, under the lordship of Christ. But read the Old Testament, please. It's full of interesting, engaging, practical, and, and very spiritual content. Now, we, this is an academic institution. This is an academic ceremony. So uh, I, I'm asking all of those who would like extra credit. I have passages for you to read with me on page four. And I'm assuming I can tell all the way to the back row that everybody here is way way above average intelligence. So maybe you don't need extra credit, but would you, would you do it anyway, please? And then when we get to those italicized sections, if, if you would read them with me, that would be terrific. A little backstory: Absalom uh, is David's son, and he is the next in line to be the king after David, only after having murdered his half-brother, David's son, who would have been first in line. But Absalom can't wait for his father, David, to die. Uh, so he gets an army together, and he and that army run thousands of people out of Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. So interestingly enough, we have David on the run from his son. We're in the midst of a war between David and his son, Absalom. And the other thing you need to know about Joab, who is going to be uh, uh, important in this conversation, is he's, for some reason, David's favorite general. He's an awful, brutal, murderous man. And why David likes him is probably simply because he's effective in one definition, as of effectiveness. But let's, uh, let, let's look through this passage in 2 Samuel. King David commanded his generals, including Joab, out of respect for me, deal greatly with my son, young Absalom. All the people heard David's command to his generals. It's amazing love that David has for Absalom. Absalom had killed one of his sons. He had tried to weasel himself into being the king by peaceful means. And then he resorted this finally to run his father out. Then, then the battle began in the forest of Ephraim. And Absalom's army was defeated by David's army. So Absalom tried to escape on his mule, but while riding away, his hair got caught in the thick branches of a huge tree, but his mule kept going and left Absalom dangling in the air. Now this is sounding a little bit familiar to people. You might ask, well, what was he thinking riding a mule anyway? Uh, why wasn't he riding a horse? But you have to understand that mules in the Middle East were the Hummer SUV of the time. They weren't no Yugo. And those who rode mules were royalty who wanted to have attention and soldiers who wanted an animal with a steady foot and was easy to ride and less dangerous than a horse, especially in difficult situations. A certain man saw this, namely Absalom dangling in the air, and went, and went to tell Joab, I saw Absalom dangling from a huge tree. What? Joab answered, you saw him dangling there and you didn't kill him? I would have rewarded you with 10 pieces of silver and a hero's belt. Well, help me now. What's the name of this, this person that's talking to Joab? Right. He doesn't have a name. Oh, he has a name, but he's just an ordinary, no-name person. And that's important. He's just like me and most of you, just ordinary people. Some of you will be just tremendous and great, so apologize, I apologize for that. Now, Joab publicly ridicules this ordinary fellow. He said he'd given him 10 pieces of silver, and it's really difficult to, to estimate what 10 pieces of silver were. I've seen estimates uh, between $100 and $2,500. It's hard, it's hard to, to make the conversion. But regardless, it was an impressive amount. It was, it was supposed to have embarrassed this man for not having made the right decision. And he had this hero's belt uh, that offered to him that he would have had, supposedly, according to Joab, if he had killed Absalom. 
And uh, it's, a, it's a medal of honor, a medal of valor. And it's bigger than this. You can't rarely wear it around your neck. You have to put it around your waist. And uh, that, uh, thus, it's a, thus it's a belt. But we're warned in the Bible about dealing with people like Joab. And this is where the extra credit comes in. You have to read with me. We're developing a relationship here, okay? So read with me. Don't stand with evil plotters against the king, since the king can do whatever he wants. Those who obey him will not be punished, because the wise find the best time and the best way to do what is right. And you see that that's from God's word. That's from Proverbs. But, but this ordinary guy, he says, I would not kill the king's son for even a thousand pieces of silver. We all heard what the king said to you and the other generals. He said, protect my son, Absalom. Now, he didn't say, oh, oh wait a minute. I, I had no idea that that was, that was a possibility. Tell you what, wait a little bit. I know where he is. You don't. I'll go take care of things, and I'll come back with a different message. No, not, not, this, not this ordinary man. It wasn't worth to him a hundred times more than ten pieces of silver, or anywhere between ten thousand dollars and two and a half million. Don't know. And the hero's belt wasn't worth it either. Instead, this nameless man is at least three things. He's loyal to the king, he's very wise and practical, and he had the right priorities in life. Again, extraordinary students, what does Proverbs say? Wisdom is much better than gold. Good judgment is better than silver. Choose a good reputation over great wealth. High admiration is better than silver or gold. And the ordinary man goes on to say, the king would certainly find out who killed his son, and if I'd risked my life by disobeying the king, you would have abandoned me. Notice the wisdom of this no-namer, this ordinary man. He's savvy. He's wise, he gets it, he knows how the world works, he knows who he can trust and who he can't. Class, you who are earning extra credit this morning, what, is the, what does wisdom say? Confidence in an unreliable person in times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth or walking on a lame foot. In other words, it hurts and it's not as productive. And Joab, I won't waste my time with you. Then he took three daggers and plunged them into Absalom's heart as he dangled, still alive, in the huge tree. Here's, here we have Joab at his best, an assassin, one with his own personal agenda, one who mocks the wise. Achievers who are earning extra credit, please re read with me. Mockers hate to be corrected, so they stay away from the wise. Joab, he had, he had no time. He wasn't, he wasn't the moral or intellectual equal to this ordinary man. Couldn't carry on any more conversation. He was speechless. What could he say? And then finally, then 10 of Joab's young armor carriers surrounded Absalom and killed him. To me, this is one of the most disappointing verses in the entire Bible. Conformity. It's how society works. It's the common conduct of most of all of those around us. It's what is thought necessary to succeed. But it leads to death. And one last chance for extra credit. I think there's a few who need it. The wise carefully avoid danger, but fools plunge ahead with reckless arrogance. Violent people mislead their friends down a harmful path. You know, I'm, I'm going to change our perspective here. This no neighbor is not a very ordinary person after all, is he? In fact, he's extraordinary. This unnamed nobody is extraordinary because he had a biblical worldview. He had a, a worldview about government, about authority, about personal responsibility, about materialism, about moral absolutes, about ethical standards. He had a worldview about one's reputation and uh, peer pressure. 
he had a worldview about what's wise and what's foolish, and he was courageous enough to be the exception in an unexceptional world. He doesn't just doesn't have a worldview. He did his worldview. It's Joab, Absalom, and these ten mindless armor carriers who are the ordinary people. It's ordinary to believe morality is relative, like Joab. It's ordinary to be materialistic, like Joab. It's just ordinary to want to be dominant, like Absalom. It's ordinary to disrespect even good authority. It's ordinary to conform to others around us, like the armor carriers. It's ordinary to be weak and not stand up for what is good and right. It's ordinary to mock others. It's ordinary to be mean. It's ordinary to be unexceptional and just to blend in. Everyone defaults to their true worldview, especially in times of stress. But even in our routine, habitual decisions each day, we do our true worldview. What we do reveals what our worldview really is. Graduates and supporters of these graduates, what will your response be to life's challenges, trials, emergencies, and temptations? Most of us here are just ordinary in one sense, ordinary people, and we would say that we have a worldview. But we are extraordinary individuals when we really do that worldview. In the marketplace, in our careers, in our families, even among strangers. Graduates, relatives, and friends, be extraordinary. Don't be ordinary. The routine moments of your everyday life give you a chance to prove yourself one or the other. At work, in church, within your family, attending graduate school, rather than being proud of just having a worldview, or knowing your theology. Every hour, do your worldview. It turns you from being an ordinary person into an extraordinary person. It was our privilege last night at our annual baccalaureate service to recognize uh, many depart academic departmental awards and other um, achievements of our senior class, and uh, some of you were able to be with us. I would like to mention two of those awards that were presented last night, and we will not ask these people to come again to stage uh, today, but I do want to recognize them, and after I, I, when I uh, read their name, I would ask, like to them to stand so we can uh, encourage them. These are the university's uh, two highest awards, and so that is why they are uh, acknowledged and recognized today during commencement. The first of those awards is the Guy T. Gillespie Memorial Award. Belhaven University presents the Guy T. Gillespie Memorial Award to the graduating senior who in the judgment of our faculty approximates most nearly the ideals and mission of the university, which is to prepare students academically and spiritually to serve Christ Jesus in their careers, in human relationships, and in the world of ideas. The award is given in honor of Dr. Guy T. Gillespie, who served as Belhaven's president from 1921 to 1954. This year's recipient recently received the Mississippi Nurses Foundation School of Nursing Scholarship, as well as the School of Nursing Nightingale Award. She is a member of the Mississippi Nurses Association. I am pleased to recognize this morning, and would you join me in celebrating the recipient of the Guy T. Gillespie Memorial Award, a nursing major, Latoya Smith Gray. The Trustee Scholastic Award is presented each year to the graduate who has the highest academic average for the most credit hours earned at Belhaven University, and that's a minimum of, of 106 credit hours, and so it's 106 and above. This graduate has not only excelled academically, but has done so as a four-year student athlete in the sport of softball. And uh, in case you don't know about our softball team, they are headed to Virginia next week for the World Series, competing for a national championship, yeah. 
An education major from Overland Park, Kansas, the recipient of this year's Trustees Award is Meg Garten. Would all the graduates please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the class of 2017 2018. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty of Belhaven University and as a senior vice president and provost of the university, I hereby certify that these candidates, upon completion of all requirements, have successfully achieved their degrees. We therefore recommend that the Board of Trustees confer upon each of them the appropriate degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities these degrees imply. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Belhaven University and the charter granted by the State of Mississippi, I hereby confer these degrees upon you the class of 2018, may God bless you. Will the first roll of graduates please come forward and the others may be seated. In a moment, Dr. Fredericks is going to call the names of these graduates and as they come across the stage to receive their diploma, we obviously are honoring and thankful for them, but they don't come across this stage alone because it's taken moms and dads and brothers and sisters and, and spouses and extended families, encouragement and finance and all to make this possible. And so today, today when they graduate, we also want to honor you, the family who's come to, to represent them today. And so when your graduate's name is called, we invite you to stand so we can also honor you and you can get a much better picture. Justin O. Osevedo, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. <laughs> Kelly Marie Aholt, Bachelor of Science, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Anel Anderson, Bachelor of Social Work. <laughs> Kyle W. Andrews, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Brittany Joanne Ayers, Bachelor of Music. Lauren A. Barger, Bachelor of Arts in Music Education, Summa Cum Laude. Orlandria D. Beeman, Bachelor of Science, Magna Cum Laude. Chanel Gabrielle Beaumont, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Laura Catherine Biggs, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Chase Birch, Bachelor of Science. Ellen Blackman, Bachelor of Social Work. Caitlin Bluebaugh, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Stephanie R. Bonham, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Summa Cum Laude. Michaela Bowen, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Mahershala Hashbaj Bradford, Bachelor of Science. Ansley Elizabeth Brennan, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Cum Laude. Mary Burns Bria, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. William Layton Bristow, Bachelor of Arts with Honors. Yu Chen, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Kelsey Brown, Bachelor of Science. Marcus D. Brown, Bachelor of Science. Ashley D. Broyles, Bachelor of Social Work, Summa Cum Laude. 
Aaron V. Burt, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Cum Laude. Karen Elizabeth Camacho, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Cum Laude. Alia Lauren Carlberg, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna, Cum Laude. Taylor Case, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Anna R. Cash, Bachelor of Science. James R. Casimir, Bachelor of Science. Karina Michelle Cater, Bachelor of Arts, Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin E. Coakley, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. David Charles Cole, Bachelor of Science with Honors. Cassidy T. Comstock, Bachelor of Science. Steve Cooper, Bachelor of Arts. Elizabeth H. Cush, Bachelor of Arts. Jack Lewis Cutler, Bachelor of Science. Ashlyn D. Davis, Bachelor of Science. Christian E. Davis, Bachelor of Arts. Lex Harlan Davis III, Bachelor of Science with Honors. Ron Davis, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Benjamin Austin Douglas, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Jonathan E. Durham, Bachelor of Science. Emily Elizabeth Eckerson, Bachelor of Arts. Madison Nathaniel Lakeford Ellis, Bachelor of Arts. Claudine Evett Evans, Bachelor of Science. Cassandra Deshay Evans, Bachelor of Science. Julie D. Ewing, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Stephen C. Fairchild, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Dominique Ferreira Farias, Bachelor of Science. Andrew Farmer, Bachelor of Science, with honors. Lauren B. Fagan, Bachelor of Science. Colton Fontana, Bachelor of Science. Christina Elizabeth Ford, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Cum Laude. Corey Fox, Bachelor of Arts. Alexandria Marie Furge, Bachelor of Science. McGovern Elizabeth Garten, Bachelor of Science, Summa Cum Laude. Lisi M. Gray, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Jack Zenobio Gruba, Bachelor of Science. Shekinah Nicole Guy, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Catherine C. Hampton, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Abigail Hand, Bachelor of Arts, Magna Cum Laude. James Douglas Haynes, Bachelor of Science. Wesley J. Hannaford, Bachelor of Arts. Kaylin T. Hansen, Bachelor of Science. Courtney Nicole Harper, Bachelor of Science. Hunter Harsh, Bachelor of Science. Bailey C. Hart, Bachelor of Science. Hannah J. Hartsfield, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Marie C. Haynes, Bachelor of Arts, Cum Laude. Nicole S. Healy, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Cum Laude. 
Marquise S. Hedge, Bachelor of Science. Mariah N. Henry, Bachelor of Fine Arts, cum laude. Jerry P. Henson, Bachelor of Science. Jessica. Jessica Reagan Hearn, Bachelor of Science. Jordan Alexandra Herring, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Brittany D. Harrington, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Molly A. Hurtle, Bachelor of Social Work, magna, cum laude. Anne Merriweather Hillicky, Bachelor of Science, summa, cum laude. Christopher J. Hinkle, Bachelor of Science. Kendra Janice Hobson, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Joseph Kale Hollingsworth, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Hannah H. Holloway, Bachelor of Science, magna cum laude. Lydia Ingebeyer, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Rachel L. Jager, Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Arts, magna cum laude. Kristen Chauchi Clara Johnson, Bachelor of Social Work, magna cum laude. Trevor Johnson, Bachelor of Science. Marla Joyner, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Madeline H. Jolly, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Music, cum laude. Samuel David Joy, Bachelor of Science. Zachary Joyner, Bachelor of Music, cum laude. John Kakira, Bachelor of Science. Hannah C. Kenyon, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude. Hunter M. Ketteringham, Bachelor of Science. Sarah Caroline Kimball Jones, Bachelor of Arts, magna cum laude. Anna Catherine Kuhn, Bachelor of Fine Arts, magna cum laude. Miranda Michelle Kunk, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, Honors Fellow, summa cum laude. Rochelle A. Lee, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. David A. Lippincott, Bachelor of Science, summa cum laude. Han Yang Lu, Bachelor of Science. Victoria Renee Lombardo, Bachelor of Arts, Honors Fellow, summa cum laude. Kayla J. Luscious, Bachelor of Social Work. Jessica Mahoney, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Sabi Mali, Bachelor of Science, magna cum laude. Kylie A. Malone, Bachelor of Arts, Honors Fellow, cum laude. Sindrek J. Malone, Bachelor of Science. Keith J. Marshall, Bachelor of Science. Samuel R. Mast, Bachelor of Science. Halima L. McCree, Bachelor of Fine Arts. Rico D. McCallum, Bachelor of Science. Carolyn J. McFall, Bachelor of Fine Arts, summa cum laude. 
Jonathan McConagall, Bachelor of Science. Natalie C. Mecklen, Bachelor of Fine Arts, cum laude. Haley R. Merrill, Bachelor of Science. Grace Ellen Mertens, Bachelor of Fine Arts, summa cum laude. John Gregory Miley, Jr., Bachelor of Science. Tanya Mitchell, Bachelor of Social Work, summa cum laude. Kimberly Payton Moran, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Patricia Marino, Bachelor of Arts. Vernon C. Muse the third Bachelor of Science. Lashala D. Nelson, Bachelor of Science. Gabriella C. Newcomb, Bachelor of Arts in Music Education, cum laude. Josiah T. Newcomb, Bachelor of Arts, cum laude. Jared Elijah Norton, Bachelor of Science. Amy Elise Ott, Bachelor of Fine Arts, cum laude. Sarah Nicole Papa, Bachelor of Social Work, cum laude. Kaylee Patrick, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Kylie J. Patterson, Bachelor of Science. Allison Lindsay Perkins, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Dwayne A. Perkins, Bachelor of Science. Regine Roseanne Peters, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Sierra O. Pittman, Bachelor of Science. Carly Camille Price, Bachelor of Arts, Cum Laude. Grace Elizabeth Ramazzini, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Brandon K. Randall, Bachelor of Science. Madison Reap, Bachelor of Science. William M. Redman, Bachelor of Science. Ashley Yvette Reed, Bachelor of Science, cum laude. Sedinia L. Reed, Bachelor of Science. Michaela Reed, Bachelor of Science. Emily R. Rhodes, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude. Dion Richardson, Jr., Bachelor of Science. Cedric L. Riggs, Jr., Bachelor of Fine Arts, cum laude. Samuel Riley, Bachelor of Science. Kenesha Robinson, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude. Grisha Elvera Rodriguez, Bachelor of Arts. Denarius Ross, Bachelor of Science. Dequavion J. Roston, Bachelor of Arts. Adam D. Rylander, Bachelor of Science, Kusuma Cum Laude. Leah Marie Sabella, Bachelor of Science, Magna Cum Laude. Jessica C. Schmidt, Bachelor of Music, Cum Laude. Brooklyn Christine Shoemaker, Bachelor of Science. Taylor S. Scrivener, Bachelor of Arts in Music Education. Victoria J. Sewell, Bachelor of Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Stephen C. Sexton, Bachelor of Science. Jerishia 
D. Shelby, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Kenneth S. Shelton, Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Kaylee Morgan Shields, Match Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Jonathan Spencer Schatz, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. <laughs> Catherine E. Singleton, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Bailey H. Smith, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Christy T. Smith, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Rashawn D. Smith, Bachelor of Science. Sydney A. Smith, Bachelor of Science, Magna Cum Laude. Latoya N. Smith Gray, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Blakely C. Smythe, Bachelor of Science. Alana Faith Stanley, Bachelor of Arts. Rebecca Steen, Bachelor of Arts. Elizabeth L. Stevens, Bachelor of Fine Arts, summa cum laude. James F. Stewart, Bachelor of Music. Amber Tamar Tadiarka, Bachelor of Science. Michaela J. Tardy, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Cum Laude. Jermarcus C. Tate, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. David Owen Taylor, Bachelor of Science, Summa Cum Laude. Mariah Lene Taylor, Bachelor of Arts in Music, Magna Cum Laude. Jasmine N. Thigpen, Bachelor of Science. Andrick L. Thomas, Bachelor of Science. Philip R. Thomas, Bachelor of Science with Honors. J. Sierra D. Thornton, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Shaniqua L. Thornton, Bachelor of Science. Dylan T. Throgmorton, Bachelor of Arts. Sean Michael Tierney, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Hunter Nicole Tillery, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Christopher C. Tobias, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Clara Elizabeth Tucker, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Lauren H. Urey, Bachelor of Fine Arts with Honors. Alvin R. Vaughn II, Bachelor of Science. Jonathan Veldhorst, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Claire E. Verdorn, Bachelor of Arts, Honors Fellow, Magna Cum Laude. Summer Nicole Warren, Bachelor of Science, Summa Cum Laude. Rolanda F. Washington, Bachelor of Arts. Stacy J. Washington, Bachelor of Science. Clayton A. Webb, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Danielle M. Wesley, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Megan A. West, Bachelor of Science. Andrea Womack White, Bachelor of Social Work, Cum Laude. Ryan Bennett Williams, Bachelor of Science, Magna Cum Laude. Tony B. Wilson, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Travis J. Wilson, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. 
Caitlin Nicole Witt, Bachelor of Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Sarah E. Wolf, Bachelor of Arts, Magna Cum Laude. Tyler J. Wolf, Bachelor of Science, Summa Cum Laude. Jamie R. Wood, Bachelor of Arts, Cum Laude. Yu Chao Chao, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Wenwei Jo, Bachelor of Science, Cum Laude. Let's praise the Lord for these students' success. Would you bow your heads now for our closing prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all your blessings to us. We're thankful together to be with these that you love and we love, and we pray a special blessing on each one who is here. We thank you for these students who has finished the course, for the parents and family who have sustained them, for the faculty who has encouraged them, and for Belle Hayden that has been here to bring us all together. We pray that you would bless each one and send us forth to do your will. We thank you for the Fredericks and their work with us at Bellhaven. We pray that you would give them a happy and good time now as they go to do other things in your will. And we thank you for the Chungs and for all the wonderful deeds they do. We pray that you would bless them in their missions. And we pray that you would send us all out to remember that we are here to serve you. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen.